Yeah, hello, this is Cuckoo. I'm right here at Superbooth 2018 at Haken Audio booth. <laughs> Second booth. You got two booths. We got two booths because yeah. we got separated. That area over there is headphones only. Oh, okay. So uh, it's all for people who just want to do critical listening. So we're really happy that we're in that booth so people can really just put on headphones and concentrate and people can talk normally. But since we are driving our this new product with uh, acoustic speakers only, uh, we are kind of in, in another ante room. Next yeah, so speaking of acoustics uh, and new stuff, look at this. This is the Continuum Mini and powered by a, a, yeah, an acoustic speaker. Acoustic Which, acoustic? A speaker with no cones, a, a speaker that resonates like a guitar body. Yeah. So the idea is um, you can take a sound, uh, electronic sound, and make it meld into the acoustic environment. Sort of that thing that we're missing with, uh, you know, when you hear speakers with your electronic instruments, they're always off in a distance. So this thing, not only does it give you this sort of a, a 3D sound around it, but also um, we, you can couple your instrument to it and you can feel the vibrations of yeah. the audio. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what hello. we have connected to now is our new Continue Mini. Yeah, which is the, Let, let's talk about yeah, that. We'll it's incredible. We'll speaker, but now we have the, the Mini. So this is um, a Continuum fingerboard. It is the exact same sound engine that you would get in a Continuum, either a full size or a half size. And a thing that many people think about the Continuum fingerboard, the big ones, is that people assume it's a controller, but it's not. It's you can use it as a controller, but it's a rich synthesizer engine in it. And in this tiny little version, people will probably uh, assume it's a controller, but no. no. it's a, The full engine is in there. The full engine is right un here under this LCD. What we're looking at is a prototype. So there are some design changes, uh, minor, that we're going to make in terms of the way the playing surface lays and the playability of it and the way that the... Uh, uh, LCD is uh, mounted over here, but it's pretty well close. It's getting very, very close. We've uh, we've been wor working over the last year and, uh, and plus on this uh, unit, and we're getting ready to release it by the end of the summer, uh, probably via Kickstarter. Very cool. Uh, and have you set on a price yet? Um, yeah, I'm just going to give you rough prices. I think the Kickstarter early adopter is going to be in the 550 US dollar range. Mm -hmm. And the uh, retail price is going to be somewhere around eight hundred dollars once we release it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, a really nice. Yeah, we wanted uh, to make something. Well, make it a, make something that was affordable. Um, it's not going to play exactly like a continuum. You just can't shrink that kind of technology down. But what we made was something that's very expressive, and we've leveraged all that kind of knowledge that we have with using the engine and to make something that's very very playable very portable easy to use yeah. you know it's uh, but still has a learning curve in, t in terms of playing a ribbon versus playing a traditional keyboard yeah yeah I tried it before and I'm, I'm very used to playing the continuum uh, and it feels similar but a tad different like a bit I don't know stiffer in a way yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's only so much sensitivity you can put into yeah. the technology. Like when we press the note on the continuum, we're actually reading 12 simultaneous sensors with yeah. very, very fine accuracy. Here we're using a, a combination of technologies, so we're getting about four sensors. So there's really only so much you can do with that, but still it's a beautiful, uh, expressive instrument to play. I enjoy it. Yeah. And on the, on the other side here, we've got some connectivity, right? We've got connectivity. So we have a USB connection, which is power, and uh, it's class-compliant MIDI. Uh, next to it, we have a pedal external. Uh, you can hook up a foot pedal to it, um, or you can hook up a... Uh, it also has a serial connection, so you can hook up a control voltage converter. And so there's a Eurorack, uh, um, Eviton Technologies makes a micro CVC. So you can get, use this as a controller for your uh, analog sense. Cool. And, and last, we have a combination headphone and line output. Nice. And that's it. That's for connectivity. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm very eager to, to see you play this and, and to hear it with a speaker. Yeah, I'll just play a few sounds for you. And these are all, so what we're doing, we have a limited sound palette now, but these are all sounds that are based from the continuum. 
Um, I've been just over the last week sort of adjusting them a bit to make them a little bit more playable with the mini. Cool. cool. So Cuckoo, um, you probably noticed that these sounds, even though we're playing this instrument monophonically, the sound engine is polyphonic. So when you lift up, if you have a, a note that's sustaining and you lift up and play a new note, it's actually polyphonic. So it can be anywhere from 8 voice to 32 voice. Yeah, so it's the same, or actually maybe even an updated version of the DSP, from, uh, I mean uh, from, it, from this yeah, one. It, it would be the same DSP on a different PCB. Okay, yeah. PCB, but, yeah, thank yeah. you. <laughs> that's it, yeah, yeah. So cool. That, that's the Mini, we are, we're hoping to um, release it, you know, in the summer, late summer, it depends how things go. It's always that last 10% that's the most difficult thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, we're excited about it. Cool, yeah, I'm, um, you know, super happy. I think for people, that, people really interested in the sound engine and the Continuum experience, and yeah, this is like the first, it's very approachable, very affordable, yeah. very portable, the and it's so light. Yeah. It's re it's. It weighs nothing, yeah. How light is it? Um, Have I you weighed it? I, mean, I don't know. It's well, I don't know. You tell me. What is that? I, I have. Uh, it's like a phone or something. Yeah. <laughs> you can lift it with a finger. It would be maybe if you had a beat step. You know, that's the same no, sort of no, beat it's step. Much, it's much, it's much maybe I don't have easier. A I've got the old beat step, so okay, maybe I think yeah, the beat step has a, a metal bottom, which makes it really heavy. Oh, okay. But this is, uh, this is much. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is really, I mean, I, I, I have the luxury of having a continuum, yeah. but I would still get one of these just from the portability aspect. Yeah. And like if you're just playing, like I was playing this morning in the hotel room, I thought, oh, geez, I just want to write this little tune down, and this would be perfect yeah. to be able to play. Yeah. Well, fantastic. And uh, as you've seen in the background, uh, there's a guy with a very nice moustache lurking around. Christoph, how do you do? Hello. Hello. Uh, you're part of the Continuum family team, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm involved in it in, in the sound design and now also in the coding and the Shark DSP, so yeah. trying, trying to help. Yeah. So uh, tell me a bit about the speaker, how it came about and who is the... Yeah, so the speaker is quite unusual. So it has been designed with uh, together with, with a French lucier, so a guy who is usually building guitars, and uh, he has he did a specific design uh, with this uh, speaker. So there's two different soundboards, one on the top and one on the bottom, and they are carefully designed so they have different kind of sounds with diff different kind of wood, different kind of, of braces. So the, the bottom is more on the low frequencies, the high, the, the top is more on the high frequencies. You have two separate volume control on, 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 on them, so you can kind of make your own sound with it. And, and uh, by the way, everything you've heard now is recorded through the speaker with just uh, the Zoom XY microphone up there. So nothing, 
No direct audio, it's just a speaker. I think it's, it sounds really nice. <laughs> Thank you. The, the, the way it behaves is very different from a usual speaker, which is very directive here. It's very immersive, so you, the, there's several things. It so, spreads those sounds all over, like a real violin or a real, a real guitar. As Ed explains, you feel the vibration when your instrument is, is on it. You can really feel the vibration of it. Uh, it has uh, two, two times 30 watt amplifier inside which is driving exciters, so one exciter on each s s soundboard, so you've got two, two con volume control. Uh, it provides, it is self-powered, it has a battery, so it, the battery can last for about one day, Wow. Which, which is quite long, and you can also take these two USB power to, for example, power that guy or any kind of uh, uh, instrument you, you would like to have. Uh, it is Bluetooth powered, so the, here it's connected to my phone, so you, you, you see the connection here. And you can have the Bluetooth connection together with the audio input, so that means you can have some back backtracks so you want to play on or, or, or whatever. Yeah, like play some backing tracks on a phone and then jam over it with a Continuum Mini, for, for example, or anything. Yeah, and since it's self powered you can just take all this and go in the street and play for a half day without any needs of any additional power. And this is a, a prototype of the box? Of this, yeah. This, this, this is going to be the the carrying box. So it's, it's you have to take care of it as any guitar or violin. So that we needed the box to put it in the plane. We can buy a plane. Yeah. So that, that's the kind of box we're going to have. Yes. Nice. So basically, the screws we, we see here. That's one of the exciters, right? Yeah. 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 We, we did a lot of tries. The, the exciter position is very important. It, it, the sound is going to be different depending on, depending on the exciter position, and also the the exciter. Or needs to be very strongly coupled to the body. If not, you're going to hear some noisy vibrations. So, so we did try to glue it. We, we did hundreds of different try, and then at the end of the day, only screwing it yeah. is, is really valid. So really that, tight and secure. Yeah. We will have nicer uh, screws uh, for the final version, but, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's going to be more or less like this. Cool. Um, yeah. I and, and you're launching it through Kickstarter, coupled with the Continuum Mini, right? Y y yes, we will have uh, the Kickstarter somewhere just after summer or be beginning of fall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it will be coupled, so we will be able to have the Kickstarter, the Mini plus plus uh, the, the, the owned. Uh, we will have two, two speakers in the Kickstarter. You, you've got that Pyramid guy, which is a bit higher and giving some more, more bass, more powerful s s sound. This guy is coupled with a class A amplifier. It's a, it's a class D amplifier inside, which is all, also quite a good one. Uh, I guess you're going to ask also about the price. It's going to be what's the price? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly the same as the mini. So it's going to be around 500 for the the Kickstarter, and about 800 uh, euro here uh, for, for the after the Kickstarter. Very nice. And the and the little stand we're seeing here now. How do you how does it attach and uh, here uh, we will have different holders. So this this one has been designed so you can put uh, the mini. It's just the size of the mini. But I if you want to put any other stuff on it, it's going to be okay. And you, you can you can kind of put your phone phone on it also. Uh, and if you have some apps or. I have the Bluetooth. You can see play both of them. You, you can connect to it any kind of other uh, uh, electronic instrument. So this this one is designed to have the size of the mini, and we will do different kind of holders to be adapted to other uh, electronic instruments. So the sound of it is really designed so it fits for electronic music. It's not going to fit for any kind of, of already mixed audio. It works, but, but, but the, the, the tuning of the sound has been done specifically for electronic music. It starts from 35 Hz, so it's quite low. You can have big bass on, on it, and, and up to 16 kilohertz. So that's, that's quite wide, but not flat at all. It's very colored sound, but that was the intention, like a physical instrument, a, a guitar or, or, or a violin. It has it, its own sound. Yeah. Yeah, I tried some different uh, sound sources, like the OPZ and stuff, uh, and it really flavors the sound. It's not like a neutral 
mixing. <laughs> no, it really has this acoustic vibe that is very unique. Yeah, that, that was also an intention. We were working together with Hacker Audio for a long time on physical modeling, but that was trying to be as close as possible with electronic to the physical world, and now we have that real connection, so we are ending in the physical body having the, the, the sound of a physical instrument, yeah, so, which is nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much for the update. And uh, yeah, continue mini. What do you call this speaker again? So this, the, the, the speaker itself, this one is the Onde. So it's, remember the Onde Martino. So clearly they have this resonator for the Onde Martino. So we yeah. wanted to, to remind these this great guys. And the name of the new company is La Voix du Luthier. So it's a French name. So but dedicated to this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Check it out uh, and uh, stay tuned for, for the Kickstarter campaigns when they launch later this year. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much.